So today we're going to be talking about how to get that popular pebble-like skin texture in Photoshop. So yesterday I was casually window shopping in Amazon and one of the first advertisements that I saw on the header was of a jewelry brand. And as you can see in the screenshot, look at her skin. It has a kind of unrealistic but very beautiful attractive skin texture and this is what we'll try to achieve in this video. And honestly when I saw this, I just couldn't wait to try and get my hands on Photoshop and I put hours and hours and hours yesterday and finally figured that out. And today I cannot wait to share it with you guys. So this video is divided into three pretty sections and you don't have to watch them all. So in the first section, I'm going to be talking about how to get this in Photoshop straightforward, non-destructively. In the second section, I'm going to teach you how to create a preset or a pattern. So that way you just don't have to create it every time you open up an image. The third part of the video is where things will get really, really interesting, where I uncover my strategy to figure this out. And this is really essential, you know why? Because I get a lot of questions in Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. People send me a lot of questions and they send me pictures. How to achieve this in Photoshop, how to achieve that in Photoshop. And I'm totally fortunate to receive those questions and answer those questions. But here's the problem. That's not the way to learn. Do you know why? Because tomorrow there'll be another thousand retouchers coming to the market with hundreds of thousands of techniques and you cannot learn them all. Think of it in terms of learning the piano. Suppose you like the song Christina Perry's A Thousand Years, right? And you go to YouTube and type how to play Christina Perry A Thousand Years on piano and you learn that song key by key. Tomorrow comes another new song comes, John Legend's All of Me and you want to learn that. So would you learn each and every song because every day tens of thousands globally new songs come up into the market. No, right? You would rather learn how to play by ear so that no matter which song plays on the radio, you instantly play it on your keyboard or piano, right? So in the same way, you have to learn to play by eye and observation in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop and before we begin, a very big thank you to Jason Guy for submitting this photo and letting me edit it. He's an awesome photographer, a brilliant photo. You gotta go ahead and check out his work right here and I mean it. Alright, so let's jump straight in. So the first thing that you need to do, you need to convert the layer in which your model is into a smart object. There are two ways of doing it and if you're wondering why my icon is small, you can right click here and Go to medium, medium thumbnails and there you go, you can even set it to large thumbnails. And before you do anything, do this. Make sure your image is 8-bit. To do that, image mode and from 16-bit, change it to 8 bits. Now this makes things a hell lot faster and also some filters applicable because some filters are not applicable to 16-bit images so make sure you do that. Okay. Next thing that you need to do, convert it into a smart object. Two ways, right click on it and click on convert to smart object or filter convert for smart filters. Alright, so let's do it this way. Now this converts this image into a smart object. Now we need to apply some surface blur. Now here's the thing, when you apply that fake beautiful skin texture, it's essential that you remove previous skin texture, okay? Otherwise it will look ugly. Alright, so let's go ahead, let's zoom in and have a look there is some skin texture which we would have to remove in order to apply that kind of skin texture. To remove that, filter, blur, surface blur. Not Gaussian blur, surface blur. Okay, why surface blur? Well, let me, let me show you why. If you apply Gaussian blur, it applies the blur throughout the image. It doesn't see what is what in the image. It doesn't consider anything. It just applies the blur. Now, surface blur is a little different. If you go to filter, blur, surface blur, it analyzes the dark areas, the bright areas, and it only blurs the areas which are flat, okay? Which doesn't have a lot of texture. Have a look. It has blurred. If I check off the preview, you'll see that it has, if I check it back on, you'll see it has blurred only these areas which has less texture, okay? So let's go ahead and increase the radius to something like 20, 30-ish. Now still you cannot see the blur on the skin. You know why? Because we have to increase the threshold. Now threshold determines the size of the texture that this filter will blur. Now for example, if I go ahead and increase the threshold, you'll see that textures of this size will be blurred. But if you go all the way to the right, you'll see a lot of things would be blurred. Okay? It depends upon the texture size. Are you seriously getting it? 
Be honest. Let me explain to you again. All right. If the threshold is five, let me explain to you in the simplest forms possible. Small textures, small skin textures would be blurred. Okay. Now these are big skin texture. To blur big skin texture, you need to increase the threshold somewhat higher. To blur even big textures, you need to take the th threshold higher. Now, if you take it too high, it will think I is a texture and it blurs it also. So you need to find a happy place where the skin texture is blurred and the other parts are not damaged enough. So radius just controls the amount of blur and threshold controls what to blur. Okay. So you can keep the radius anything for now and threshold just control the threshold and all of this is non-destructive which means you can always go back and change the values. Okay. Find a place where this is blurred. 45, 65, this has to go blurred, okay? I think I would be happy at 55 and that's pretty much good. Let's go ahead and decrease the radius. That's good. Let's, let's increase it just a little bit, okay? Let's decrease the threshold just a little bit. Let's see what it does. No, it's still visible. Let's go ahead and increase that to 36 sounds good. What about 40? Let's keep it 40 for now. Let's keep it 40 and the radius. Let's try decreasing it. Try keeping everything to the minimum value possible. The most minimum value possible. Most to minimum. Is, is that a right uh, way to use that? I don't know, but you get the idea, right? Okay, I think 15 would be fine and click OK. We can always go back, right? So this was the previous, this was the before and this will be the after, after the process has been completed but I don't know why is it taking so much time. Okay, now as you can see the surface blur has blurred things that we didn't want it to blur. What to do? Now here's the key. The key is smart filters come with a mask. So you can always go ahead, click on that mask, you can invert the mask, control a command I and take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white, okay, and start painting over just the skin, okay, and blur it out. Don't paint over the lips, just the skin. Also what you can do, you can uh, convert it to white and then paint black in the areas that you want sharp, okay. So in this case, I would prefer to just paint over the skin because we have a lot of hair and clothes and stuff. Okay. You need to do it properly. I'm, I'm doing it really quickly just to show you guys that. Okay. Don't go over the hair. I just did it. Now here's the key. The key is that that kind of skin texture, skin texture is something which you cannot see past this area. Up to this area, there is. Up to this area, there is. But beyond, when it goes to the arm, you don't see much of that here. But there are some skin textures at the back. So you need to really understand human skin before applying this, okay? So open up your clothes and look at yourself in the mirror. You'll understand that, okay? As simple as that. That's very simple. Study yourself first and you'll get a better understanding without hurting anybody else's sentiment. All right. So now it's time for us to apply the skin texture. And to create a skin texture, we'll use the concept of blend modes. And we talked about this in our previous video that overlay is such a blend mode that makes everything which is 50% gray invisible. Everything which is darker than 50% gray, darker. Brighter than 50% gray, brighter. And we're going to use that. How? Control Shift N. All right. This opens up the new layer dialog box. Also what you can do, you can go to layer, new, layer and from that also you can do this but we want this dialog box and let's name it skin texture let's name it pebble now mode change this to overlay and make sure you check fill with overlay neutral color okay and click okay now this creates a new layer you cannot see anything but you can see here that it is gray since it is 50 percent gray and the blend mode is overlay it's going invisible now let's create texture in this one we are going to discuss the science behind it in the third segment of the video, but for now, let's go to filter, noise, add noise. But before you do anything, are we forgetting something? Yes, we are. Convert this into a smart object. Convert for smart filters. Then you ha apply what you have to apply. Go to filter, noise, add noise. And let's start with something 
and this is looking good this kind of skin texture is looking good let's start with 35 okay and uniform and monochromatic make sure these both are checked and clicked on and click OK now next thing as you can see this is small the skin texture is very small looks like a metal let's blur it out filter blur Gaussian blur let's add a blur of guess what let me give you the magic number 3.5 now where did this number came from? Remember what amount of noise we applied? 35. So take the decimal just a step back, 3.5. Alright? There's no rule behind it but this works. I have trial and errored it in the couple of hours yesterday so this worked. Next, it's soft. We've got the texture but it looks not sharp enough. So let's sharpen it. Filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Alright? Now here, let me give you some values, we'll discuss it later. So values 500%, okay, and pixels, double the pixel of blur. What was the blur value? 3.5, 3.5 double, 7, 7, and reduce noise, you can keep anything you want, let's say 10 is fine for this one, okay. And make sure you change, change from lens blur to Gaussian blur because we are removing noise from Gaussian blur, right? Okay, now once you're satisfied, click OK. Okay, now let's have a look what kind of effect it applies and then bingo, we'll be done. I'm just talking just to pass the time because this is taking a lot of time and Smart Sharpen is kind of the filter that takes a lot of time along with Blur Gallery. That's kind of uh, the filters that you really need to take, take your coffee and sit down, maybe chips or something along with yourself and just munch in while it's just loading or maybe you cannot even listen to a song on YouTube that may slow down your computer or things like that can happen. So you, you really need to either take your mobile phone and game play games, don't play games, you'll be distracted uh, or maybe check your mails or something like that. So be multitasking, utilize your time. All right, now as you can see how beautiful the skin texture is, just kidding. So skin texture is there now all we have to do is opacity I've always said this before opacity is your best friend all right so decrease the opacity to 28 or 35 have a look how beautiful it looks right now now you might have to decrease the opacity say to 30 and if you think the size of the texture is too much there are two ways of decreasing it Actually, there are two things that you need to do to decrease it. So the first thing that you need to do, you need to go to Gaussian Blur and decrease the value from 3.5 to whatever value you want, some lower value, maybe 2.8 and click OK. And then you have you have to go to Smart Sharpen and double 2.8, whatever the double of 2.8 is, maybe 4.6, okay? And put that value there and you'll be good. Maybe 5.6 is the double of 2.8 and I'm again talking just to pass the time. All right, this time I'm just gonna cut beautiful it's finally done look at it it looks good let's zoom out let's have a look right now this looks like the skin texture that we witnessed earlier in this tutorial which we saw in the ad and by the way this tutorial was also suggested by Sandy Walker thanks a lot Sandy for opening up my eyes she actually sent me an image where this texture had been used and that got me interested and let's have a look now at the image did you spot something wrong there is something wrong the wrong thing is, this texture is being applied all over the image, in the hair, in the eyes, in her clothes, and we don't want that to happen, right? So what do we do? We create a mask. Do we have to create a mask again? No! We blurred the skin and for that, we already created a mask. Have a look. This is a mask that we had already created. So all we have to do, we have to copy that mask here. To do that, press and hold Alter Option, click and drag and copy to this one. Replace filter mask, yes, have a look. Now, this texture has been removed from her hair, her clothes, wherever you have blurred the skin, only there the texture has been applied. Isn't that interesting? Now this brings us to the second segment of the video where we'll learn how to get this instantly. Now there are two ways of getting this instantly. Number one way is creating an action of the same. And you know how to create an action if you don't, refer this video right here all right and number two way is creating a pattern which we are going to do in this video all right so let's go ahead and create a new document file new and make this big the bigger the better okay it's gonna take time but the bigger the better okay with 400 by 400 4000 by 4000 sorry 4000 by 4000 and let's name it text pattern 
all right that's all good and create make sure it's srgb and let's go ahead and create it now do the same thing create a new layer Control shift n and change it to overlay and fill it with overlay neutral color and change it back to normal you know now there was another way of doing this you know create a new layer and fill it with 50 percent gray using that color but this is one of the ways you can use any way you want the objective is just to fill it with 50 percent gray now let's do the same things that we did in the previous image but bigger okay convert this into smart object okay and then filter noise add noise let's add a little more noise this time we added 35 but if we have larger resolution images what to do then to be safe let's keep it 40 monochromatic uniform okay now filter blur gaussian blur and 40 4.0 okay all right next go to filter sharpen smart sharpen and keep the values 500 is fine what was the value four double of four eight okay that sounds good gaussian blur and click ok now we have created the texture now all you have to do you have to define this as a pattern now we're still waiting for the effect to take place and it's a hard life i know but it's also enjoyable full of adventure now all we have to do we have to save this as a pattern so to do that go to edit define pattern okay text pattern let's name it text texture pattern skin texture pattern to be precise that doesn't really matter click ok now come back to this image test it all right and let's throw this away we don't want you anymore now let's create a new adjustment layer of pattern okay this is automatically selected the last one that we created and click ok change the blend mode to overlay watch it's created now the best part here is to reduce the size all you have to do double click on this and scale just reduce it there you go if you want to increase the size that also you can do if you want to decrease it you can do that also so i think for this one i guess 67 maybe 56 89 or 67 is good click ok reduce the opacity there you are you get that let's have an overall look there's something to learn here so when you zoom out now suppose you are creating this for an advertisement or something they're not going to zoom in and see all right so they're, they're going to look at a small image of this in that case you might have to increase the opacity just a bit which might not look good when zoomed in but when you post it as an image in either social media or something you might have to increase the opacity in order for the skin texture to be more visible have a look now this is not this is looking very ugly this way but if you zoom out something like this this might look pleasing so then again it's totally an artistic preference an artistic choice completely subjective and that's how you add skin texture using a pattern really quickly now if you just wanted to know how to add this texture bye take care keep creating but if you really want to get into photoshop and learn how i figured that out so that you can figure out your own technique stay tuned this brings us to the third segment of the video where i reveal my strategy in figuring this out so the first thing i did was just observe and I expect you to do the same. Whenever you see something amazing, just observe, okay? I downloaded the photo from Amazon and I zoomed in 100% and had a look, had a close look at the skin texture. And then I broke it down. So number one, observe. Number two, break the effect down. Now breaking the skin texture down was a little easier. So suppose this was the advertisement and I zoomed in, had a look at the skin texture. What shape is the skin texture like? So it's pebble-like. Okay, now think of it in the, these terms. What is it actually doing? It's actually darkening certain parts of the skin and that's it. Darkening it in a pattern, have a look. If I zoom in 100%, have a look. It's just darkening the skin in certain patterns. Okay, now this reminded me of a blend mode. If you have watched my previous video on blend modes in depth, you would remember that overlay is such a blend mode which deletes or makes it in makes invisible everything which is 50% gray darkens everything which is darker than 50% gray brightens everything which is brighter than 50% gray so if we can create a neutral layer with those areas dark we can achieve this if we can create a layer with 50% gray with some areas darkened in those patterns we can easily create this now the challenge was to create this texture so 
To create this texture, we have to generate something. Okay, we have to generate some kind of something, something. And one of the ways of generating something, and I think it's one of the only ways, apart from filters and stuff like that, is noise, right? And once you get the noise, you can add a hell lot of things to it. You can add a hell lot of filters, you can add a hell lot of texture, you can add a hell lot of uh, uh, adjustments to it, and it's gonna be fun. So add noise. Noise was just a base material to create something above it. Now, when you, when you add the noise, you get the texture. You have seen this. Let me show you. So let's throw it away and let's create a new layer and uh, let's not just convert it into smart object this time and do the same thing. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay. And go to filter, noise, add noise. Okay. When you add a noise, you get a skin texture. Yes, you do. Have a look. I pretty much got close to it. This looks nice. But here's the thing. The skin texture is very fine because what noise does it creates differences between one pixel. It means pebbles of one pixel. Now it's too small. Now one of the things, one of the ways of making it bigger was to blur it out, okay? So I used blur to make it bigger. Now when I made it bigger, I found that to be too soft. I found it to be too blurry because we blurred it out. How about sharpening it back again? So I tried smart filters and those numbers appeared. Now how did these numbers come into existence? Most of them, trial and error okay so you have to try and try and later you can figure out any math formula behind it but most of it is trial and error because photoshop is an art you cannot measure it in terms of maths right the values that i suggested might be wrong for you you might find a you might find a better way you might find a better value that's up to you okay so i insist you and i request you to keep trying new methods keep playing with tools and you uncover beautiful beautiful results all right so that's pretty much it for this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope this was helpful and i'll see you guys in my next one and if you like the video make sure to give us a like and don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything all right till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating